Well, good morning, Community Bible Church. How are you doing this morning? Uh, thank you so much for being um, flexible with uh, this different kind of service and different kind of online service as well. I want to just uh, let you know kind of where we're going to go for this service and how we're going to organize things. And uh, then I'll start off with prayer and, and we'll get going. So I'm going to lead in prayer. I'm going to give you a little update on our family as we battle with COVID-19. And um, then uh, perhaps mention a little bit of what the plan is for our church going forward since the pastor, myself, and my family have come down with COVID. We need to make some adjustments. So I'll give you some information about what, at least for now, the elders and I are planning. And then uh, the boys, actually, a couple of the boys are going to do a little interview with me, and that's really going to be the heavy lifting for the message this morning. I'll just have to be honest, I feel very weak and um, didn't feel like I could really prepare and preach an online sermon. But at the end of those interviews, I will uh, do a little scripture reading and wrap up for our service this morning. It will be shorter uh, than normal, and I hope that you already sang along with the Praise and Harmony Singers uh, for Only a Holy God, and then there'll be a closing song as well. I hope that'll be a blessing to you to sing along with them. So, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, um, I pray that you would just be with uh, our congregation, be with Community Bible Church. Help us, O oh Lord, to put our faith and trust in you. Help us to be able to, um, Lord, worship together in this unusual format and Lord, even as I am, am in a weakened position, um, help me to be able to lead our congregation through a time of worship. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. So, a little update on our family. Um, yes, all of us are sick. Um, everybody but the dog and cats. Um, and uh, to be honest, uh, COVID-19 is terrible. Um, uh, I'm faking it till we make it here on this video because... It's not fun. Um, so some of the details that you might want to be uh, aware of since we were at church last week, um, Jenny started having symptoms on Monday. She was tested on Wednesday and they got the results back on Friday and that would be Friday, September the 4th, um, that she was positive for COVID. Um, gradually, every member of our family began to demonstrate symptoms. Um, Hudson and I were tested on Thursday. Life Action sent him home to uh, quarantine here with us. And uh, Andrew was uh, tested on Friday, uh, September the 4th as well. Uh, but we have not received any results back except for Jenny. Um, so uh, thank you so much for your prayers and all of the food donations that have come our way. It's been a huge blessing and, and we are very appreciative of that. Um, my dad also, Lester, um, is having symptoms as well. Um, he is hanging in there for now. I know that many of you are very concerned for him, and I thank you so much for your prayers for him. Um, he's doing okay. He is especially weak, um, but it seems like his temperature is under control. In fact, it's even lower than most of the rest of us, and uh, he seems to be breathing fine for now. So uh, please continue to, to just pray for him. Um, and then let me just mention kind of what we plan to do uh, going forward. So because my symptoms started on Wednesday, September the 2nd, I'm really not, uh, it's not appropriate for me to be out in public if we do a 14-day quarantine until Wednesday, September the 16th, or really the Thursday, uh, September the 17th. So what we're planning to do is to do online services for today, September the 6th, and then next week, September the 13th, so there will be no um, services at church in, in the building, no face-to-face -face services for today, September the 6th, and um, next Sunday, September the 13th. And then after that, Tom Foreman is going to preach, and I'm just going to stay out of the building, stay out of the congregation uh, for yet another week, uh, September the 20th. So Tom Foreman is going to preach September the 20th, Lord willing. And then, God willing, I will be back in the pulpit to, to share the Word of God on the 27th. We're just trying to be especially cautious about uh, how we respond. Um, you know, uh, we don't want anybody else to get this, and we trust that God will protect 
our congregation from having sort of an internal outbreak of COVID. Um, but nevertheless, that's the plan. So online services, two Sundays in a row, and then back in person, at least planning for that right now, on the 20th of September, but that would not be me preaching. I would remain out of the congregation, and our family would stay home. And then September the 27th, I would be back in the pulpit, God willing, Lord willing, uh, for all of those things. Uh, now, let me just kind of introduce uh, what we're going to do now. Um, I've interviewed John and Hudson about kind of what the Lord's doing in their lives and some scripture passages that are meaningful to them at this time. Hopefully, um, next week on uh, September the 13th, uh, we'll have a little miniature interview with uh, Caleb and Andrew as well. But uh, for this week, we're going to kind of let John and Hudson share the scripture with us as well as share what the Lord's work in their lives um, as a part of the message. So um, I trust that this will be a great blessing. I believe we'll have John go first, and then after that, Hudson, and then I'll wrap things up for our service today. God bless. Okay, um, Community Bible Church, this is my interview with John, and uh, we're just going to ask him a couple of questions, same as we've done with the other boys, um, about uh, the Lord's work in his life. So, hey, John. Hello. So, uh, why don't you just give us a quick sort of life update on you and Maggie, and um, what you're doing in life, and maybe a little bit of what you're doing in church ministry. Sure. Um... I got back from a seven month deployment in the middle of July. And so Maggie and I have been sort of reintegrating and learning how to be married again and kind of come from that separation, uh, which has been going well. And uh, we've been growing a lot together and, and yeah, it's been going well. Um, I'm looking to re-enlist in the Marine Corps probably sometime this month which will add another four years to the already five years, uh, which is coming up soon. And if we, if we do that, there's a likelihood of us having to move in the next little while, possibly to Japan. Uh, it's one of the places that I'm gonna try to, try to go to if I can. Uh, but we won't really find any of that out until last minute. So uh, we'll just sort of, sort of take that as it comes. Our church, we're, we're super involved with a good church here in North Carolina, uh, and we are going to be a part of a, a core sending team that is trying to plant another sister church uh, in a nearby town. We've got, I think, five or six families that are, that are coming with us, and we're all going to start meeting in a community center uh, and inviting people from the that local area uh, to come and, and worship with us. Uh, so we're excited about that opportunity uh, to be uh, directly involved in some of the initial growth of the church and be able to learn some of those uh, some of those things that come with church planting. It's fun. Yeah, it's been fun to have those phone conversations with you and like talk about everything from ministry philosophy to sound systems and other yeah. stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So um, why don't you just share with us a couple of minutes about what the Lord's teaching you and um, how you're growing in your walk with God. Um, there've been numerous things in my marriage, uh, especially dealing with the deployment and kind of, learning how to communicate from a distance uh, and be a good husband from a distance, which I wasn't all the time, uh, but I tried and God was gracious to us. And uh, I think we did really, really well uh, compared to a lot of people. Uh, and then more personally, just to me, I, I, I've been learning recently, uh, really since coming home, a little bit about where I really find my identity and what things I really uh, cling to in my mind to sort of uh, substantiate my, my manhood uh, you know, or my, my 
personality. And, you know, the more I, the more I read the Bible, really, the more I realize that it is not to be found in any career, no matter what that is, uh, especially not military. And my temptation over the last few years has been to strive for these things that I think will help me to uh, achieve something that will last, that will help make me more of who I'm supposed to be, who I need to be. Uh, but sort of just resting and finding my identity completely in Jesus is um, a better way to do that. Um, and it's easy to say, but I recently experienced a relatively minor kind of failure, I guess. Uh, I just decided to not pursue a particular goal that I was, uh, that I desired to pursue. And there were a few reasons for it, but one of them was that I, I just, yeah, I wasn't pursuing it for the right reasons. And I was, uh, and so it's a little bit harder for me to live out that truth of finding my identity in Jesus than I thought it would be. Uh, and it's been a good challenge. That's something I've been. Cool. What are you most excited about right now? We're going roller skating tonight. Uh, I bought a rifle two days ago that I'm very excited about. Uh, we're going to a marriage retreat this weekend. There's a lot of good things. I have a lot of fun things coming up, actually. Uh, so those are just... Awesome. So um, why don't you share with us a scripture passage that is meaningful to you right now in your life? Do you, you want me to read it? You can, or you can quote it if you can do that. I don't trust myself. Um, I've been, I've spent a lot of time in like just the first couple of chapters of Ephesians recently. Um, I've been reading other things too, but kind of coming back to it every few days. Um, and so it's hard to know where to start because you kind of have to read the whole chapter to feel like you're following his train of thought. Um, but I, I really like what Paul writes in chapter one, uh, in verse 15, he's already kind of talked about a lot of different things related to God's saving work in our lives. And so he says in verse 15, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And really the, the only thing that I've been thinking about related to those verses, I think there's numerous things you can think about, but just that there are, there are things that God really wants us to know about him uh, and all of them are found in the Bible <laughs> <laughs> which is which is nice but but he also has to take a, an active role uh, and we can pray for each other that he would do that uh, to take that active role of enlightening our our hearts or uh, be given the you know, really the Holy Spirit of wisdom uh, and of knowledge of him and all of that. I just think that's really cool uh, and something that I've been uh, thinking about a lot lately. Yeah. So it's, it's important in the book of Ephesians that um, there's multiple times when Paul emphasizes that it takes the miracle of revelation to understand anything about God. 
yes. comes up in chapter one again in chapter three. It's powerful uh, truth there. Well, John, thanks. Thanks for uh, giving us an update and a little spiritual encouragement there about understanding God and his character. Yep. Well, Community Bible Church, um, as you already know, I'm doing something a little bit different for the message and kind of interviewing at least some of our boys and asking them about what the Lord is teaching them and what the Lord is doing in their life. So this is our interview with Hudson. And uh, hey, Hudson. Um, hey. Why don't you t just give us a little update on your life and um, what you're doing kind of in life and ministry. Yeah, so for the past seven weeks, I've been up in Michigan working with Life Action to like train and prepare for serving another year on the road, traveling, going into churches and uh, holding revival services. So we've been doing a lot of just playing music and getting ready as a team. Um, so that's what I've been up to recently. Good. And um, what's, uh, what's going on with your schedule? Well, um, right now, so was up in Michigan, but right now I'm back home because I'm in quarantine because, uh, yeah, because our family is sick. So. Good deal. Well, it's good to have you home. So. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be home. Well, what have you, what's the Lord been teaching you lately? Um, well, I guess one thing that God has kind of been um, teaching, he's been teaching me a couple of things, but one most recently is um, kind of submission to authority. Um, it's something I've kind of been struggling with and what the Bible teaches about that and how I'm called to live in regards to what the Bible says about it. So um, most recently I've been going through the book of first Peter and um, I've, I've read through it a couple of times and just some kind of studying through it and reading it more slowly now. And I've been kind of keep coming back to in chapter two, I'll just read a couple of verses if that's okay. Sure. Um, kind of what I've been working through in my heart in first Peter two verse 13, it says, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governor as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Um, so I'm not one that really likes to submit to authority. <laughs> I think that I know the best way to do things, but that's not always true. Um, and sometimes even if people in authority are doing things that I don't agree with, I still need to be submitting to their authority so that I don't hurt my witness. That last part where it says, um, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Um, just how important it is for us as Christians, or just really for me as a Christian, to keep a good witness. Very good. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, so I have a surprise question to ask you that wasn't in the list. Um, what uh -oh. are you most excited about right now? What am I most excited about right now? I'm excited to be home to spend some time with the family. So that's probably what, I, and I'm really excited to, to hit the road in a couple of weeks. Lord willing. <laughs> Lord willing. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing from your life and um, from the Word of God and yeah. what the Lord's been teaching you. Absolutely. We'll talk to you later. All righty. Bye. Bye. Well, Community Bible Church, I trust that the little messages and testimonies from John and from Hudson were a blessing to you and an encouragement in the Lord. Um, I want to wrap up our service today with uh, just reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. So here we go. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I just want to um, sort of acknowledge that 
um, in weakened circumstances when any of us really is sick. It's kind of a good opportunity for us to recognize whether or not we are rejoicing in the comfort of our circumstances or whether we are rejoicing in the Lord uh, no matter what our circumstances are. It kind of gives us an opportunity to test our motives, gives us an opportunity to um, truly rejoice in the Lord when it's not easy. Um, it gives us an opportunity to give thanks when um, we're not giving thanks for something that's, that's fun. Um, we're giving thanks because of God. We're giving thanks because of what He has done in our hearts and in our lives. We're giving thanks because of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, you know, th that's kind of my little uh, passage of Scripture for uh, the experiences that I'm going through. Also, I can recognize, of course, that in circumstances of weakness or sickness, um, there is a lot to give thanks for. I am so thankful for your prayers. Uh, the prayers of the church are uh, so encouraging to us and such a blessing to us. Also, I am thankful for um, all of the meals. Um, we've had uh, immediately, as soon as I sent out an email letting people know that uh, some changes were going to be made for the service this Sunday, and it was because of COVID um, in our home, uh, immediately, like literally immediately, people were showing up on our doorstep with all kinds of soup, casseroles, Gatorade, bottled water, um, pizza. Um, we've had uh, definitely more uh, food than we've been able to eat. Uh, we're thankful, very thankful for it, actually. Um, and so we're thankful for the love, and the prayers, and the care of God's people. But of course, most of all, we're, we're thankful for the Lord. Um, we're thankful for God um, taking care of us during this time, Again, we recognize that so many other people have had this particular virus uh, be much worse for them uh, than it has been for us, at least so far. But uh, this verse is a reminder to us that in any and every circumstance, we can give thanks to the Lord for His grace and goodness in our lives. If you would, please bow with me and let's close in prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would once again, just be with us and allow us to uh, worship you, even though it's in these unusual circumstances and, and with a certain amount of uh, worry and anxiety that would be easy for us um, as a church to experience. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would give us the peace of the Holy Spirit and that we would put our faith and trust in you. Lord, I pray that you would uh, pour out your grace and spirit upon us and that, Lord, we would be able to um, just uh, rejoice in you and give thanks in every circumstance. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, Community Bible Church, um, I, I continually sort of feel my uh, weakened state. Um, it does feel a little bit like complex logic. Uh, it takes a lot of extra effort. Um, and I forgot something that I, is very important for me to say, and uh, you probably have assumed this already, but nevertheless, we are going to have to reschedule um, the Life Action Ministries Conference that was supposed to start on Sunday, September the 13th, and go for four days um, because of our family's sickness, because of the possibility of there being more people sick in our church, because of a need for Hudson, who's on that team, to quarantine for 14 days, um, it, it just wasn't going to work. They have openings that they're going to reserve for us in November, and uh, we'll just kind of keep you posted as things progress in those planning stages. Um, may the Lord bless you. I hope that you will sing along with the Praise and Harmony singers as they sort of lead us in our closing song, He Will Hold Me Fast. God bless you. Bye.